Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph's Church on this the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. We recognize that Jesus Christ is King, but we also know that our loving Savior shows us compassion and mercy as he showed to the great thief. Our entrance hymn is number 727, The King of Kings, Christ Jesus Reigns, number 727. Keep Christ the King ever before us as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service, and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I would like to invite forward, go ahead and be seated. I'd like to invite forward those young people from age four to second grade who would like to participate in the children's liturgy of the word. So good to see you excited to come up. <laughs> so.
So did anybody hear what today's celebration is? Did anybody hear what today we call this Sunday? Jesus Christ would wear a crown. Why would he wear a crown? You don't know? Because he's a king. Yeah. So it's Christ the King Sunday. As you go, I hope you learn all about why Jesus Christ is king. And may you be blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the el elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of his holy ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. 
He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross. Through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was a transcription that read, this is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God, for you are subject to the same condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crime. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, um, we don't really know what to do with kings. Living in America, we have been kind of suspicious of kings and royalty ever since we kicked them out in 1776. Kingship and royalty uh, doesn't really cut it with us. But it did for Pope Pius XI back in 1925 when he instituted this feast of Christ the King. You see, at that time, the world was just a few years removed from World War I, the war to end all wars. And yet Pope Pius sat there and he watched Mussolini parading around Italy and another man named Hitler marching around Germany. And he wanted to set up some kind of message to the royalty and the dictators of the day to let them know that they were too under judgment to a much higher authority. The Pope felt that he wanted to come up with some sign or some symbol to remind the people to get their priorities straight and to remember that Jesus is king of the universe. He wanted us to remember that all things were created for him, all things were created through him. So this feast today is to help us remember that the ultimate object of our allegiance 
in the kingdom of God is Jesus. Now, I have an observation to make. Uh, we all tend to fall into a couple of different groups, different categories. There are those who like to live in the past and those who like to live in the future. Let's look at the past dwellers first. That category can be broken, I think, in a couple different ways. The first group of these past dwellers I would call the nostalgias because they like to think and live in the past, in the good old days. They love the way things were. They don't want anything to change. And the flip side of that are those that I'm going to call the rubberneckers. Now, if you know what a rubbernecker is, it's that driver that slows down really, really slow so they can see all the wreckage of a car wreck on the side of the road, and they drive really slow, and they rough and they keep looking. But there are those of us that look at our past that way. They look at all the train wrecks in our past, in their own past, and they kind of dwell on them. So those are past dwellers. What about the future dwellers? It's the same thing. There are some of us that can't wait for the future. We're always looking to the future because we know that tomorrow it'll take care of all that ails us today. Now the flip side to those rosy colored glasses folks are the ones that look to the future but those who agonize over what's going to happen. And I'm going to call them the worriers. And God knows we all know a lot of worriers because they spend so much time playing the what if game that they end up on ulcer medication. We tend to spend so much of our time and energy looking back at yesterday or forward to tomorrow that we really miss the moments that count. The really precious moments that really count. It's not yesterday, it's not tomorrow, it's today. You see, God is present and he operates now, today. God is with us today. Now, for the past year, we've been reading from the Gospel of Luke. And you may have picked up on it, but Luke is the evangelist of the holy now. Mary announces in her canticle, Behold, from now on, all ages will call me blessed. The angels in Bethlehem proclaim, For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you. Jesus himself preaches the same message in the synagogue. Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. When the Pharisees asked him when this promised kingdom would arrive, Jesus replies, the kingdom of God is among you today. In the gospel, nobody asks you to take a number and wait. Nobody asks you to call back tomorrow. We'll take care of you tomorrow. The moment of action is always today. It's always now. So as we live in our kingdom of God today, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? It means that we need to make deliberate decisions to follow our king. We follow our king to prepare us for the kingdom of heaven to come. We need to choose to follow the golden rule that Jesus gave us. We need to rise above that what's in it for me culture that we live in. We need to choose honesty over deceit. We need to choose forgiveness over revenge. We need to learn to serve rather than be served. This is why Jesus came, to show us. 
All of these choices we make are part and parcel of Jesus' kingdom here on earth. The kingdom of God is among you. Let me give you an example. An illustration, if you will. A few years ago in West Paducah, Kentucky, a young man took a gun to school and he killed seven of his classmates. Now the parents from all over the community gathered at the school and they were frantic, frantically praying outside the building and they prayed the most heartfelt prayer that any parent could ever pray. Not my child, dear Lord. Please don't let this happen to my child. Well, there was a young mother there who pray, whose prayer was not answered that day and her son had died in the shooting. But in spite of her grief and her shock, she didn't hesitate when the doctors asked her if she would consent to donate her son's organs to those in critical need. Now many months had passed and the mother learned that her son's organs went to a local pastor and she contacted him and she asked if she could meet and they got together and they prayed and they celebrated the life of her son but then she startled him she startled him with a very strange request she said can I put my ear to your chest so that I can hear my son's heart beating one more time in the world today we're called to be that person not the consoled mother, not the grieving mother, but we're called to be the person with the transplanted heart. You see, we all received a new life in our baptism. We were given a new life in our baptism. And there are many, many people in the world today who are discouraged with the way the world is the lack of civility, the absence of morals, the greed in the world. There are so many people that need to hear the reassurance of the heart of Jesus beating in our chests. The world really needs this. It needs to recognize that the kingdom is today. It really, really needs to see it now. There are people out there that need to be able to put their ears to our chest and know that Jesus is with us. He is always with us. And that the kingdom of God is among us today. And that Christ still reigns as the king of the universe. Thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In the name of Jesus, our King, we have the courage to approach God with the needs of the people around the world. For Pope Francis, may the gifts of the Holy Spirit be his guide as he inspires Catholics to faithful service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, may they be guided by the Lord as they focus on humble service to the people in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Strand James Meetinger and Joseph William Henning, who are being baptized after Mass this morning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safe travel for the students and chaperones from our parishes traveling to and from NCYC this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of violence and hatred, may Jesus, the divine physician, Bring them healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who volunteer in this faith community, may God bless their efforts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, Peter Sprank, Alvina and Eldon Stilmuckus, Lillian Donlinger, Maynard Meyer, and Peter Mickles. May they join the angels and saints in the kingdom of heaven and with Jesus. And for Clara Lukey, whose funeral is Wednesday, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of majesty and glory, hear the prayers we bring to you in the name of Jesus, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts is number 574, Worthy is the Lamb, 574. Worthy are the ones who believe to 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. And making all, thing, all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts for, con for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one spirit, one body in, in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Our song for communion is number 338, Behold Thy Lamb, 338.
having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We do have a few announcements. First is calling all women. Please join us for a special Advent retreat featuring national speaker Katie Skiba on Saturday, December 7th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Parish Center. Take a break from the hustle and bustle of preparing for the holidays and refocus your heart on the true reason for the season, Christ's coming at Christmas. The day will include coffee, inspiring talks, a potluck luncheon, and adoration with opportunities for reconciliation. There is no fear for th fee for the retreat, or fear for the retreat. Um, <laughs> although donations are welcome to help cover the cost of the speaker, please join us as we look to the star de together on December 7th. Also, um, we're getting closer to Christmas. The Mass times will be in the, the um, bulletin, but to give you a preview, the, we're going to have a 4 o'clock Mass, tr the traditional time, over in the Mech, over in the, the gym with uh, Marquette, and then a 7.30 Mass at St. Peter and Paul in Springbrook, and then a 10 p.m. Mass, on, all of that's on Christmas Eve here in St. Joe's Church, followed by a 9 a.m. Mass on Christmas morning. You can choose which one best fits your schedule and the schedule of your family. However, we need help. The 10 p.m. Mass on Christmas Eve doesn't have any ministers, and the sign-up sheet is next to those orange baskets in the back. So if you're willing to stay up till 10 p.m. and not fall asleep, or at least let me wake you up if you do fall asleep, uh, <laughs> Sign up back there for all of the, the ministries. What a great Mass to be with you guys. Every once in a while I think of becoming a Benedictine priest and being in a convent, and then I, hear, I come to Mass and hear the future of the church already singing holy, holy, holy with us. And it's just such a great time to be with you guys. Um, I'm going to take your announcements. Um, all are invited to the Presbyterian Church this evening for a community Thanksgiving service starting at 6.30. We'll start by putting together meals for the, for the underprivileged, and then you have to hear probably the worst preacher here in town, me, give a, a little, little talk, uh, but I promise to be brief. Um, but thank goodness um, the, uh, the other preachers will be there, so if I'm terrible, maybe they'll pick something up. Um, but uh, also, lastly, all are invited to the St. Joseph Christmas fair and birthday party for Jesus taking place in two weeks on Saturday and Sunday, December 7th and 8th. Please check the bulletin for all the details and for everything else that you've heard today and for some announcements that I didn't even make that made it into the bulletin. Take one home today, please. Let us now stand. There was one other thing. We have a funeral. Um, we've had... Uh, death in our parish. Clara Lucky passed away. Her funeral will be at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. The other two masses are going to remain the same, both at Mill Valley here and here at 825. But I encourage as many of you to pray with the Lucky family at, at, at 11 o'clock as possible. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And our closing song is number 156. Glory in the Cross, 156. Let us say. 